Today we got contraband in the house. Let's uh let's get into it. The Natural Habitat Podcast. Yeah, man. Yeah, sound speeds, man. Shit. You did, man. <laughs> Cuck clack. <laughs> Cuck clack. Yeah. yeah, we did, man. Yep. Everybody knows what that cook clack sound means. Sound <laughs> fucking god damn it. I st- I tried to do it and I messed it up. Off to a bad start. Welcome yeah. to the Natural Habitat Podcast. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Mikey B. My name is. <laughs> DJ Mike Booyah. DJ Mike Booyah on the yeah. ones and threes because yeah, I lost. New, that's my new DJ alias. I you, just lo- came up with that. you lost your two. Mm-hmm. Well, I like it, and you also owe me some money for it because it's mine. Uh, I didn't use the E, so. But... It's like it's like a Rick Ross thing. You know? It's like it's like when Vanilla Ice made that beat, and he just like added a new thing. Yeah. Dum 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 ding. ding. He's like, you hear that ding? Yeah. I got the that's, ding. That's though. my ding. See, I yeah. do. <laughs> I do the damn ding. You never heard of a ding like that. Mm-hmm. And it saved it saved his ass. It did. Yep. Well, there you go, Mike Booyah. That's All right. Me right there. Well, Mikey Booyah yeah. and Mike Booyah coming to you live. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, it's a very special day. It's Tuesday. We have another Tuesday interviews day for what? you, and today we have Contraband. Yeah, man. They are a uh, a a group of producers, two brothers, and they're from San Diego, and they've just been killing it, making a bunch of crazy ass shit, and kind of um, paving a new road in you know EDM hip hop. I would say. Well, n- not necessarily hip hop, but just like just in EDM in general, because they're like such a crossover with genres. So it's not, you know what I mean? Like they do everything. You're right. You're right. So. Just in in kind of music in general, you know what I mean. If you yeah. if you go and listen to their stuff uh, on SoundCloud, it's a whole wide range of shit. Everything sounds different. It's not just you know one style. Their SoundCloud, uh, it's in the description, and the spelling is C O N T R V B V N D. Yeah, man. And that that seems to be a trend of replacing. Uh, Vowels, no, no vowels, or like replacement vowels, shit like that. I don't know. It's like one of those things in the in the in the scene. Mm-hmm. Well, but uh, yeah, they're dope. I dig and, it, and they will see soon. Yeah, so we have them on on hold right now. But before we get to that, um, I, you know, uh, a couple days ago watched this new film that is uh, out on DVD, and it it is entitled Everest. Have you heard of this movie? Yeah. Who's in it? Um, uh, I'm not sure. There was a... Uh, couple guys. Yeah, a couple guys. A couple, couple of random chicks. people. There yeah. was that guy who played the doctor in Planet Terror, that Grindhouse movie. Never heard of it. No? Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... No, there, that's just the hater coming There out. was that guy. There was another guy. Jake Gyllenhaal was in it and oh. had a big old beard. But uh, it, was all, it was a true story about a bunch of people that died on Everest. And uh, we were talking about it before we recorded. We personally would never go and climb Everest. Yeah. Why? Yeah. It's like <laughs> so many uh-huh. people die up there. Think about this. You only get one life. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag yoga. Hashtag yoga. You know? And why would you waste it <laughs> on some <laughs> dumbass shit like that? I mean, like, uh, yeah, the the reward or payoff is dependent on the risk, I guess. So, you know, you have to take the risk to get the reward. Um, I don't see any reward coming from Everest. You know what I mean? Like, there's not a million dollars waiting for you up there. Yeah. There's there's not, like, um, you're not on some list of, like, it's not, like, a prestigious list anyways. It's just a lit- list of, like, rich people who pay yeah. people to, to drag them up there. Because there's more yeah. and more people every year. More and more people summit that shit. So it's, like, it gets less and less special. 
Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, it's been done. Mm-hmm. Now move, move it right along. And also, like, there's there's seven summits in the world. So it's like, you don't have to go to Everest. There's other ones that are awesome and, you know, not as dangerous. And uh, I don't get the thing, period. You of, know what I mean? Like, I don't mountains. get why people want to go hike up to the very top of a mountain. It's like an old-timey, like, King of the Hill thing. It's something like Primal where you would like if you got up to the top of the mountain then you would get rewarded because you would know you know where the water was you know where where there was shelter where there was like a forest you would see animals so you okay would get well yeah so that things. basically long story short you get a view that's all you get yeah that's the but, one and only benefit of doing some dumb shit like that yeah and then and then once you get up there you know nowadays that's not even a good view bro we got we got instagram with fucking Scott <laughs> Kelly from space, yeah, giving us way better views. It's true. We got we, every time a person flies, you have a better view than that shit. But you got to think about what that view meant, like you know, only four generations ago. It, but it, it, this ain't four generations ago, though. Yeah, it's cool to be like if you lived four generations ago and are still alive, then yeah, that's a that's an accomplishment, I mm-hmm. guess, because you did it before all these other things were available. But now. It's like you got to find something else. You know what I mean? It's like you got to find some other type of accomplishment. If you could be one of the few people that fucking got out of the atmosphere, that's a fucking accomplishment. Yeah. Now, you know what I'm saying? It's like anything else in life. Once records get broke, you got to step that shit up. What it is? Onto the next record. You know what I mean? Now yeah. we got dudes falling from the fucking atmosphere. Yep. That Red Bull guy. <laughs> yeah, that shit was amazing. You know what I mean? Imagine his view mm-hmm. if he was awake through it. I think he was probably passed out through that thing. Yeah, I think he did. But, uh, you know, climbing up to the top of Everest is the same as diving down to the bottom of the fucking Marianas Trench, which I wouldn't do either. That no. sounds scary as fuck. We have no yeah. place in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't even swim in the ocean. I go out about my waist deep, and yeah. that's it. You, you know, know what, what I? Yeah, yeah, you know what I really like exploring cars and cities. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you know what I like exploring? Fucking taco trucks, uh-huh. fucking restaurants and shit. You know, fuck the dumb shit, man. Yeah, they don't have any I mean, like, taco trucks up on Everest. Yeah, I like going to like now traveling is dope. Traveling is a fucking thing, you know what I mean? Like because of hashtag yoga, you you travel somewhere, those are notches on your belt, you know what I mean? Going to different countries, experiencing different traditions, experiencing different cuisines, experiencing different languages and cultures and shit, those are fucking notches on your belt, you yeah. know what I mean? Opposed to fucking, I climbed this hill one time. Yeah, and you know? so so many people die up there, and yeah. the way that the conditions are, and how it takes so many days to get up to the top, and there's all these different base camps. They leave your fucking body there, and For sure. you know it's you don't you don't broke. get brought back to no. your family. You don't get a burial. None of that. Like, there's a lot of bodies that are left up there, but there's one in particular. This guy David Sharp, that uh, was on his way to the summit. And he stopped in a cave known as Green Boots Cave. And it's known as Green Boots Cave because he's wearing green boots. What about Mr. Deeds? What about Mr. Deeds? He's and up his, there? And his black foot? No. Oh, yeah. Fucking the old Deeds? Yeah. Yeah, old Deeds is up there too, frozen. Yeah, Deeds. But uh, he stopped in this cave to, you know, rest, and his body froze. Over 30 climbers passed him as he sat freezing to death. And then he started moaning, and someone heard him and realized that he was still alive, but his body was frozen. So they moved him out into the sun to try to thaw him, but it didn't work. So eventually, realizing that he was going to die, they just put him back in the cave and left him there. And now his body's like huddled up in the fetal position with his hood on in the cave. And they use it as a marker to know that they're getting close to the summit. They go, oh, there's David Sharp's body in his green fucking boots. We're almost there. Instead of like, there's that big rock that looks like a ball sack. I guess every rock kind of looks like a ball sack. In some sort of weird bally way. <laughs> yeah, but that's crazy, man. There's so many bodies that are used as markers, and there's yeah, that's crazy, dude. It's there's crazy a, that fucking they do it or allow shit like that. Like, yeah. what, what's the point, man? There's a few bodies that are left at base camp, at the advanced base camp up at the top of the summit on the hard side. There's bodies that are laying there, and you just pitch your tent next to a dead body. Crazy. What the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Now, one thing I wouldn't mind doing is if if I had to go through all the bullshit to fucking climb up to Everest, 
I better have a fucking sick blunt or like some type of dab rig or some shit. You know what I mean? Because yep. that is the highest you'll ever be. And I would also in a literal and fucking metaphorical <laughs> sense. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, I would also like to like to have a zip line down. You know what yeah, I mean? Fuck yeah. Because because once you get you're up like, there, you're like breaking the fucking speed barrier and shit. <laughs> <zip lining. laughs> yeah, maybe not. That might be kind of scary. Yeah, <laughs> maybe just like one of those ski lift things. I don't even like those, dude. That shit scares me. Yeah, gondolas, fucking ski lifts, all that shit. You're just like hanging from a wire. The gondola's the fucking, enclosed one, right? Yeah. What about a fucking uh, wind? You know what I mean? Like a good, good 80, 90 mile per hour wind come through around the hill. Whoo! Spin that motherfucker around the rope. You're done, son. That shit's bouncing off there. You know what I mean? Like something will happen. You're fucking coming off. Yep, it's over. Oh no, I don't know. I don't like that shit. What about the brakes? How do the brakes work on that thing? Like I'm just <laughs> stressing. You know what I mean? Like the whole time I'm like, no. Yeah, you just gotta pinch. Cool. You just gonna pinch it's this wire and me, stop this you know? giant thing. Yeah, you think like, oh, well, I'm just gonna get high so it doesn't bother me, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> you're just like even more paranoid. You know, it's like crazy. I don't know. I I I trip on shit heavily before i do it and then once i do it i'm okay yeah. you know what i mean like once i'm doing it i'm fine like it's like the type of feeling that people get before you go on a roller coaster or whatever you know like you when well, you, you want to like you want to get out of intimidating line. you you fucking are like walking up to it the closer you get the more you're intimidated but then once you get on it you're just like oh cool we're all good yeah you know yeah but uh i don't know if i feel the same about everest me the fuck neither i don't know if i feel the same about anything where you could just like fall off of something yeah. You know what I mean? If there's a cliff, I'm not trying to fall. You know what I mean? Like, I've never been rock climbing. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not trying to fucking, you know? If I got to have a fucking spike Dude. and ropes or whatever, I'm, no. I heard I heard this story because after I watched Everest, I got into, like, fucking some Google portal about fucking. You you ordered your climbing gear and yeah. everything. You like all, fucking, all about you, the seven you, summits you and shit. You printed burkas and fucking, like, the little. People that pack you up the hill and shit. Yep, and I got all my indigenous clothes, so I'll blend in. <laughs> and uh, so, like, I fucking, I read this thing about K2, which is this giant fucking mountain. It's one of the seven summits, and it's on the border of Pakistan and something else. And you can either go up the Pakistan way or you can go up the other way. And fucking, uh, there's this thing on the top called the bottleneck, where it's just this little tiny, like, thin thing in between these fucking sheets of rock and ice. And you got to climb up it to get to the summit. Well, there was, like, 30 people up on the summit. And this dude fucking didn't go with the group. He, like, climbed by himself. And he went up. And the, all the people came up behind him. And then he went down. And when the group went to go down, there was no ropes. Because there's, like, ropes that are, you know, hard wired into the rock for you to fucking shimmy your way down the bottleneck and there was no ropes at all it was getting dark and they didn't know what to do so they were like waiting there and people started being like fuck this i'm not gonna die on this mountain i'm gonna just go down it and fucking so people started going down it and it was so dark and stormy that you they would walk down like five feet and then you wouldn't be able to see them anymore so you didn't know if they made it or if they fell or like what happened you know what i mean so people just started going one by one and like 17 of these people died. Like fucking all kinds of people were just slipping off the bottleneck, flying down the hill. And they think that that dude took the ropes out, but they can't prove it. You know what I mean? So he came back to camp and he was like, hey, man, there's no ropes up there. I had to climb down without ropes. You need to go rope that shit up. But it was already too late. People were already coming down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that shit's crazy, man. I'm not going to trust some fuck boy. That's fucking running around in the snow, fucking with my ropes. That yeah, are well, fucking with my lifeline. What, if I'm in their situation and it comes down to it, I'm dying on that motherfucker instead of trying to climb down. Sorry, I'll starve to death up on top. I'll freeze to death. Whatever. It's gonna suck, but it's gonna suck less than falling. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'll take a little pain versus a fucking whole lot of pain. Yeah, you know what I mean. Broken bones bouncing yeah. all the way down. And Shoot shit. me, motherfucker. You know what? Let's stop. Let's stop talking about this damn mountain because it's scaring the shit out of me. And I don't I don't come here to be scared, all right? Yeah. I come here to get high. So let's have an NHP smoke sesh. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, this is, this is the longest we've ever gone in the history of the show, talking about Everest. 
<laughs> it's also the first time. We've ever talked about also that. the first time in 150 episodes. Yeah, but uh, it's scary, man. It's a real life thing. Yeah, things like that are crazy. People are crazy for doing that type of shit. I don't know. People are crazy in general. Motherfuckers don't get it. Yep, I get it. I do. I see it. I see I the st- crazy out there. I stay grounded. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Give me my weed, man. Yeah. So. uh Yeah. So if you guys would like to join us at the end of the month on March 30th, we will be not climbing Everest. So if <laughs> and you'd we'll like be live to, streaming it. Yeah, we're going to live stream us not climbing Everest. And if you'd like to join us and not climb with us, you can do it anywhere in the world. That's the greatest thing about it. Anywhere but Everest. You can't do it at the top of Everest. Yeah, maybe we'll do a tandem show with 50 million thousand and we'll do like a giant uh, tsunami drill or something. Oh, shit. You talking about an NHP tsunami drill sesh? Yeah. <laughs> That's heavy. Yeah. I don't know about that, man. We're gonna have to like both roll blunts. Yep. 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 Do you get paid to say yep? Yep. All right. I got every this. time I say yep, uh, uh, Angel gets their wings. <laughs> and and Angelo. What? Well, a guy named Angelo gets his barbecue wings. Maybe. Cool. Well, I didn't know that you had a second job that you were working as you did the podcast. Yep. Always working, dude. Always working. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, I have a track here for our smoke sesh. It is by our guest, Contraband, and it is a Star Wars tribute called The Dark Side. Fuck yeah. So let's get into it. Everybody out there, flick your bicks, snap your pics, and hashtag them NHP Smoke Sesh. And use the force. <laughs> That was dope. <coughs> What's that you got there? My, <coughs> I am your father. Is that a giant poster? <coughs> it's wood. Joey's got a wooden uh, Empire Strikes Back poster. And he's going to hold it in front of his face while we do video podcasts. Yeah, it's a bad Darth Vader voice. <laughs> 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 he's not a pirate, man. Yar. How do you know? He was a space pirate, bro. Everybody's a pirate in their heart a little bit. I was gonna, I was gonna say everybody's a space pirate. <laughs> you can't just say he was a space pirate. Yeah. Well, uh, all I'm saying is you need a little. You just need to put in some work on it. That's it. Yeah. It was it was constructive criticism. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's get into this interview and talk to Contraband, the creators of that dope ass remix. All right, let's do this. Cool. Right. All right. We have contraband on the line right now. Can you guys hear me? Yo, yo. Hey, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, so for for people who aren't familiar with uh, with your guys' music, why don't you kind of uh, set yourself up for uh, for the listeners? I don't know, bass heavy, just bangers, I guess. I mean, we're not really trying to create anything mellow for the most part. Occasionally, I mean, we'll have a mellower song, but uh-huh. just peak time music our goal. Festival so, shit. Yeah. All Festival, right. like, heavy trap style stuff. Trap style, you know, like the electric house, big room, jungle terror stuff. Just whatever is banging, like, whatever is just going to make people, like, Super go nuts. heavy. It doesn't have to be like in a box of like a genre or 
you know, a specific sound, but a style for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's super cool. And a lot of people have been doing that lately. You know, like nobody really wants to be genre specific anymore. Everybody just wants to make dope shit. And I think it's really paying off for everybody. You know, like, look at you guys. You guys got all kinds of awesome, like different styled collabs. And, and that really shows like, you know, like a um, versatility. So you guys yeah. are you guys are brothers, correct? So you have a you you have this connection. You can work together and you know get over uh, things that you know regular partners you know split up over and shit. So that's good. You guys got that going on. Yeah. And um, how long how long have you guys been uh, been producing music together? Probably three years. Three years. Yeah. yeah, we started on our own, and probably after like six months a year, we kind of working together. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What uh? Did you guys have like any musical backgrounds, like instruments or anything like that, before you guys like got into producing? Yeah, him, him a little more low key. Like he played like violin and a couple other things, but like I took guitar lessons when I was thirteen, and I was in band like all of elementary school, nice. and then um, like in my teenage years, I jammed in a band and I played bass. And like we would switch off, and I would play drums sometimes. So I was familiar with drums, and I play a little, you know, I could play guitar, but not. I was better at bass. Like I was good at making bass lines and like mm. keeping the whole rhythm of the the track, you know. Yeah, that seems really common to us. We um, always ask like similar type questions. You know what I mean? To, to, to yeah. kind of see where like everybody gets their stuff from, and and that's a very common thing. It seems like everybody has some type of like instrumental background or something before they get the drive to be yeah. a producer. It you know, I don't like I don't know a lot of people that produce in programs that don't know instruments. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think that that's kind of like a a must, you know, really. So it's cool to see that you do have that little um band background, you know. Some people are classically trained on like piano or like whatever. Yeah, I a lot of guys start like, yeah, me too, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was a fucking ADD kid. I was like super hyper, couldn't pay attention to shit. So there's no way I could have done that at a young age. You know, I'm just now getting to that point in my 30s, you know? Yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it seems like, uh, it seems like the better the producer, the more versatile their childhood was with music you know what i mean it sounds like you could play a lot of different instruments and that you know comes in comes in handy when you're in the studio creating something you know on the production standpoint and um so i heard something about a skrillex show at edc in 2011 that really kicked off this you know this want and need to create music for you guys definitely so why don't, yes. you, why don't you tell us about that what happened well, um, our first EDC was actually 2010, and uh, he was kind of becoming a fan of the music in 2010. Like he was, that's when Dead Mouse was kind of, you know, a thing. Uh -huh. And um, he was a fan of Dead Mouse, and he had went to a couple other little masses. And um, for me, I wasn't exactly a fan of the music. I actually would make fun of it, which was funny. <laughs> See, I'm right. I'm right there with you. I used to make fun of it a couple years ago, and then now. Getting it, getting into the culture, you know, with Joey, I have like a whole new view on it. Exactly, yeah. you know. So I I would just make fun of it, but the thing was, I like the party. Yeah. You know, I thought the party was sick, so so I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be there, and um, in 2011, that's when Skrillex started to come up, and uh, he released Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites. Yeah, and uh, my buddy Riley was like one of my best friends. Actually, was like pushing him on me to listen to him because I was into before that. I was kind of into like hardcore, and I was going to shows and stuff like metal shows. Yeah, and like I've liked all different kinds of music, and I think that's that's one thing why we're so versatile too, is because we like everything. Yeah, you can hear some of that influence in your guys' music. Yeah. Sure. And um, he was just pushing him hard on me, and I was like, "Dude, this is actually pretty crazy." Kind of, it it was the first thing like in electronic music that blew my mind. Yeah, that I was yeah. like, "How is someone uh, making this?" And then uh, just seeing him live, and it wasn't we saw him like the second day. He played on Saturday, so the whole first day I was really like, "Fuck, I want to see this guy," and I ended up having a really good time because I was like, "I'm gonna give the whole." 
thing a chance, you know? Yeah. And I and I was like, holy shit, this is this is it. This is like the new thing. And then just seeing him on Saturday, it just cemented it. I was like, okay, I have to do this. Like, mm-hmm. it I was, think the, that's the so crowd, cool that everything was just like, oh, this is it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool that Skrillex was the pinnacle for so many artists. You know Dude, what I mean? Yeah. Like even even myself, I when that shit came out, all I wanted to do was rap on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like uh, producer yeah. producers think like, oh, all I want to do is make that same type of shit. Me. I'm thinking, no, dude, I want to rap on those heavy drops, and it's almost impossible, but yeah. that's the feeling that I get, you know, and I'm sure that it's, like, similar to you guys, you know, I'm sure it's, like, almost the yeah. same type of drive or, like, or yeah. like inherent need to want to do that shit, you know? Yeah, it, like, sparks that creativity inside you, you know what I mean? It yeah. seems like that was a catalyst for a lot of people. Yeah, Skrill yeah. fucking Skrill. Which is dope. And he still is. It's crazy. Yeah. So, dude. um, so one of your guys' first, uh, big releases was a track called click that you uh did with haterade and that kind of put you guys on the map yes so um what was uh what was it like you know ma- making that track linking up with haterade it was released on a record label and this was your first like uh you know big project what what was that like did you did you know what you were making when you were making it you know, yeah, like, uh, I, did, did you know it was going to blow up that big or did we, you just have the regular hopes like every other song? Yeah, we DJed at the same venue and that's kind of how we started hearing about Haterade uh-huh. and their show was like super dope and like I went up to him one day and I was kind of just talking to him like, you know, like keep doing what you're doing, you're going to fucking blow up and they were only at like 5,000 followers then, you know, and he was like, oh yeah, he's like, you guys are cool, like you want to collab sometime and we're like, yeah, fuck it. Hell yeah. <laughs> we his house and... The track probably went through before click. It was like six different tracks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that happened. It went all over the place, and we had um, a song where like, okay, this is it. Like we fucking were sold on it, and we didn't save it. Oh. So next next time we came back there, we were like looking for it, and it wasn't there. So we're like, okay, let's start this again, and we fucking <laughs> made click and. Bam, that's it. Damn, that's hardcore. Yeah, it's such a fucking like a rookie thing to do too. You well, know? maybe <laughs> may, a rookie move. We've uh, all been there, you know. Yeah, everybody yeah. does it, but maybe it happened for a reason. Maybe that song needed to be yeah. made a certain way. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and click is one of our favorite songs we've made to date. So yeah. we're we're happy with how it turned out. That's yeah. that's even more awesome when a song that ends up blowing up being one that you like. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that's not always the case. A lot of people have songs blow up that they don't even give a shit about. You know, yeah. they're like, fuck, I hate this song. Why do people love it? You know what I mean? And and that's awesome when you get that opportunity to have it be one that you actually love. Yeah. What's what's kind of funnier about that track, too, is, um, okay, like, obviously for us, it was like an instant kind of success because we gained almost 5,000 followers just off that one track. Yeah, that's, so I mean, that's big. It, it like shot us up and then um, it it made it so the other blogs wanted to fuck with us. Yeah. You know, and like we the needed that time. because we weren't even getting listens. Like the blogs wouldn't even open our emails, you know. And um, so it was an instant success in that way. But then like later on, like way later on, at least six months, Arrowcord ended up supporting it and like yeah. playing it live on a stream and he ended up following us and he was like yo this tracks fire and then um like when was it in december i think whenever edc brazil was cruella ended up playing it on the main stage nice and that was like a real highlight for us because it's a huge audience it was a huge audience and like edc is like our dream you know so it's like well we are getting closer to that to that ultimate goal yeah like our song just got played on the system. The next step is just getting behind the decks and, you know, being the one that's playing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's closer than you think, I'm sure. And, yeah, and that, that's what was tied, too, about the whole, like, Wewek and Skrillex and Alza thing because, like, Wewek just made a song with Skrillex, Yellow Claw, and this was downloading our music and supporting our music enough where it's going in his mix. Yeah, that's fire. Second track in, so it's like, damn, like, this connection is really – is starting to come to life, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and I think that that's where the bloggers dropped the fucking ball. 
yeah. you know, because think about this. What I'm noticing, I've only been like, I'm new in the last two years in the scene, you know, and I've already witnessed everything change. And, and now you see like, you see like collectives are the ones that are finding all the new talent and yeah. pushing the shit. And, and, and it's not bloggers anymore. Bloggers only fucking job is to find the talent and they, they fucked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now all they're doing is fucking a fanboy and shit or whatever, sucking every big artist dick instead of fucking doing their job. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's, that's not how it's supposed to be you know we need to get it back to like there's so much new talent out there all the best artists haven't even been found yet and i firmly believe that in every genre in rap in fucking you know what i'm saying like there's yeah, so so great. many look at slushy look at how slushy just blew up he's do you know who he is yeah of course yeah you know what i'm saying and that was fucking he gained twenty thousand followers in a week yeah you know that's all it takes bro and there's a there's a there's a million slushies out there yeah, I guarantee get, it. You know, we get a bunch of promos from people who have like 200, 300 followers, and their songs are crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And you would think that like the new bloggers or like the people who are in the scene that care about like developing the scene more and like making it better for everybody would be like out trying to find these type of people because the real good artists sometimes don't make it as far as they need to go because they don't have that push from their peers or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Sometimes people feel like the odds are against them. Even me, myself, I'm fucking 31, you know, and I still feel the odds against me all the time. I'm just barely like starting a solo alias and fucking, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy, dude. It's, it's just crazy to see, like, I, I can imagine like how some new artists would feel. I've been doing rap for fucking 10 years, but, but you know what I mean? It's like, how can fucking, somebody else have that have that drive to want to fucking succeed without yeah, any push you know definitely hard i feel like with a lot of the blogs they only want to push the people who are already big yeah, yeah. or who are already blowing up so you know like if it wasn't for click chances are, i mean click just like opened up a bunch of doors like a month later we released on the edm network and then we got like on like trap style and Ocho Day, and it just kind of kept going and going. Now, like a year later, I think we released probably like thirty songs um, from Jeez. Click. Yeah, and I probably honestly more, but like thirty yeah. releases on like actual blogs and shit. And it's fire, dude. Like just on our SoundCloud, I, I, well, like our collective plays on SoundCloud between the blogs was over like one point five million. That's sick. So I mean that that's pretty tight, and on YouTube it's it's probably like two million. Mm. Yeah, and I mean before click, I think we had like ten thousand plays on our SoundCloud. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, and it and that's cool that one one track can do that for somebody. You know, it's it's cool that, and and I guarantee that it wasn't just that one track. Obviously, you yeah, know? yeah. Like, just, look at uh, it's just that, that one track that pushed them to notice it. You know, but really, it's like. People like you guys and other artists that are really talented like that have all these coming out that are all good, just as good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just they just don't have that platform yet. So we just got to yeah. keep pushing it. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's it's funny, too, because um, the other day someone was telling me that we were lucky. And I was like, I was like, yeah, sure, sure. We're lucky <laughs> that, that the blogs might have opened one of our emails, you know. But if we were like shitty producers, it wouldn't have meant nothing. Yeah. So yeah, we're lucky in a sense, but I mean, we work hard. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. think we got into this. So it's the emails don't send themselves. The connections don't make their own connections. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you got to work. You know what I mean? People don't see that. People, a lot of people think that you know becoming an overnight celebrity or something is a possibility, and it's not. Yeah. You know, it's definitely not. Nobody gets that. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. So, um, so what do you guys have in the works? Anything coming up? Any uh, big projects that you guys are working on? A lot of huge stuff, actually. So we got a label. Uh, yeah. We're starting up. I mean, it's kind of, it's with our, us and our buddies. So it's been kind of built up, but we're going to release our first track sometime this month. We're actually waiting for the artwork for it to make it official. Nice. But it's going to be our track with Haterade. Super nice. dope. Meditation or meditation. Meditation. Semi super dope. Awesome. Uh, what's the what's the label gonna be called? Resistance. Resistance. Nice. Resistance Records. Yeah. 
Nice. It's like we're calling it resistance is like we want we're going to release like multi genre, you know, it's all dance music, but there's no genres. Like if you look on all our social medias, it's like fuck genres. Like we're going to kind of take that with us, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, good. Resist that urge to be in a box. Like it's not it's not about like classifying into genres. It's about making dope music all around, you know? You have to be able to appeal to everybody, I think, you know? And Yeah, I think some sites like SoundCloud have kind of like pushed people to be genre specific because every time you post a song, you have to hashtag yeah. the genre, yeah. You know what I mean? And so it kind of like already sets tones. So it's cool to see that you guys do that, you know? I, I appreciate that because I think that this songs are songs, you know what I mean? They're supposed to be appreciated, but for a feeling or however the song is and not just by like whoever's pushing it. So yeah. it's cool, dude. The no genre thing is really smart. And that's really where the future's at because look at how future bases just exploded. Yeah. And like, yeah. look at how like all styles are really changing, you know what I mean? And like everything is just evolving really good right now. And I think that it's cool that, and that's what's pushing it. It's like the no boundaries thing, you know? Yeah. So you guys are onto something. That's- that's how it is. So it's like we want to make music that we can play from the beginning to the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's fire. And how I like to think of it too is like we can make music for like, even though it's all bangers, it's like any time of day, it's like music for any time of the day pretty much. You know what I mean? In different styles, but it's all just whatever it is is going to get you going, you know? Yeah. You I mean, guys are uh, in San Diego now is that where you guys are going to stay at and and base the label at or like what are you guys going to do yeah because the labels with our buddy silent riot and he's based on san diego too so yeah um until i mean i don't know la would be cool but we all of our jobs are out here and we're not yeah. making enough money to do that yet yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and you're in you're in a good spot you're in a big city and it's also you know where you guys grew up so you're holding it down like for yeah. your hometown and everything so that's yeah, good it's awesome It'll and, it, and it's cool too because like low key we're starting to be like people know us here as the producers that are on the rise yeah and that's tight like we have that like people are like i feel like people like kind of expecting us to do things and that's cool because like i know we're gonna do things but it's cool when you have people that are like okay yeah these guys are gonna do it like yeah you know it's, 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 we have a team and you know, but what's funny is our biggest fan base is actually in L.A. That's mm. awesome. <laughs> it's still close to home. You know, that's yeah. like, what, an hour and a half away or whatever. It's yeah. Not, yeah. I mean, like, it's a California fan base is legit, really. It'll it'll travel throughout the whole state. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's dope, man. I think you guys are definitely, uh, you're definitely on the right road. And we wish you, you know, the most success with your label. It's going to be dope. When you have all the links up, let us know and we'll repost yes. them and everything and help spread the word. Yeah, we'll definitely give you guys continued support. And whenever you guys want, you guys can come back. You guys got something to push or when the, when the label drops or whatever and you guys got something big going on and come on through. Yeah, we'd well, love one, to have One you. other thing that's about to be big and it, it's going to really... This March is going to be big because of the label launching the collab with Hatery. That's kind of been like a long time awaiting thing. Like people knew we were getting together in the studio and they got kind of excited, you know, because for a while Hatery was under management and they wouldn't let them work with us because they yeah. said big enough. Yeah. So we had to scrap a track that was a banger. And then finally it was like, you know, fuck it. I want to work with you guys. Like we're just going to do it. And we made a really big track. And, um, yeah, so we have that, and actually, we did an official remix for Snoop Dogg. That's fire. Yeah, oh, yeah, I love Snoop. He, um, he runs this label, and uh, he's been in the industry for quite some time. And I guess he's he has connections with like Afro Man and Snoop Dogg. And he asked us a little while back if we wanted to hop on a remix. We told him, yeah, of course. You know, we we've been trying to do like an official remix, you know, for someone. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. And. Uh, Pretty much Snoop Dogg spit a couple of verses. They sent it over to us and we did a track and we did it pretty fast actually. And like the track is, is one of my favorite trap tracks that we've done in, in quite some time. I think it's really unique. Damn, that's dope. And um, that's releasing on the 15th. Fuck yeah. And so we're, it's going to be a big, uh, 
March for us. Oh, cool. yeah. Well, that was, uh, is. We're going to fucking support that fully for sure. Yeah, yeah this and is... I'll shoot it over to you guys too so you guys could take a listen to it and you guys could download it if you want or whatever. But you guys will, I think you guys will dig it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Se- yeah send timing. it over and uh, we'll we'll put it on the end of this podcast because this will come out on the 22nd. So it'll be. Oh, it'll that's be a good idea then. then. Yeah. Yeah. All awesome. Right, cool. Okay. Cool. All right, fellas. Well, fuck. It was good having you guys on. Thanks for fucking coming. I mean, like, you guys are awesome. And I think that your fans are really going to dig this shit. So um, we wish you guys continued success. It seems like you guys are on the right path and you guys are doing your thing. We look forward to seeing all kinds of big moves coming. And fucking congratulations, dudes. Thank Thank you, guys. Yeah. You too. All right. Take it easy, bros. Peace. All right. Boom. Yeah. Well, there it is. That was dope. Yeah, they're really dope, actually. Yeah, I think I think that it's super cool that they're brothers and they just get to work together and fucking, you know what I mean? It's always cool to be able to share something with the sibling or a fucking significant other. You know what I mean? When you get to when you get to work together, you know it's fucking awesome. And yeah. I think that it's cool that they get to be so creative together and fucking make shit that they love to do. And eventually, they're gonna fucking not have to work anymore. You know what I mean? And be able to support themselves and their families from something that they created together, you know? So I think that that's really dope of them. And I think that they're really killing it, you know? Like, they're doing big things. They have a good um, view on things in the game and, like, where they want to go. And I respect the no genres thing. And Yeah, you know that's what I dope. Mean? Like, yeah, I, th- I think that they're really dope. Yep, I agree. And, uh, you know, it's good to uh, – it's always good to – let someone you know discuss how they feel about their music and especially like producers because producers you know they're held back a lot to where they can only speak with their music and you know as a as lyricists we can if we want some got something we want to say we can just put in a verse yeah and you know it's harder to convey that as a producer so uh you know i think uh i think it'll be good i think it's good for their fans you know most of all to be able to connect with them, you know what I mean? Because they were, they were super fresh dudes, and I think that, you know, they got they got like good heads on their shoulders. They're in it for all the right reasons, and they're just gonna keep growing. Cali natives, just like us, represent mm-hmm. California. Oh yeah, is that the noise we make? It's yeah, something like that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I almost forgot it. Yeah, and they fucking have the the same type of affinities for things as we do. They love Star Wars. They made a Star Wars track. Yeah, you know we love Star Wars. And, that, and that's really it. We were scrolling through their SoundCloud. We saw that Star Wars track, and then we were like, "Yo, we need to talk to you about why you make music because that Star Wars track is amazing." <laughs> and we really just we need a reason to we need a reason to play it as a smoke test song. Yeah, no, nah, but for real though, they're really dope. Yeah, um, I think that they. They're on to wherever they want to go. They're getting there, you know, and that's what's important about today's artists, you know, is that all these all these new SoundCloud artists that have blossomed and then fucking got onto all networks and got onto like, you know, the EDM.coms and fucking the big YouTube channels and the fucking, you know, all the big blogs and all these type of things, you know, they're doing this on their own and they're creating a path for everybody, including themselves. You know what I mean? And now other people can kind of like take the same route that they did and and we are as well. You know what I mean? It's like all these independent artists are really just creating a new industry. And I think that's the most important thing about it. It's like now we don't have to be ran by dinosaurs anymore. We don't have to fucking have anybody dipping in our pockets anymore. We don't have to fucking, we don't have to like not do something because it's not what you think is good for us. You know what I mean? It's like that, that type of shit is, is ridiculous and it's never going to work. And, and you know, it's, it's funny how they said they had to deal with some of that with their homies management, like that they weren't allowed to work together at first. And, you know, I think that's where a lot of people get it wrong. That's where fucking managers and labels and fucking blogs and shit don't get it right. You know, they, they, you don't know what's best for them. Honestly, you fucking have no idea what's best for the artist. You don't make their fucking music. You know what I mean? Like, let them make their shit. If they know somebody who would be good for them to collab with, let them fucking collab. It doesn't matter how many followers they have or any of the bullshit. What matters is the after product. Is the music going to be fucking on hit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and there was a time for a long time in the music industry where, 
you needed to be discovered by some sort of label you needed to be signed to a record deal or a distribution deal or put on a major tour for you to you know blow up because there the internet wasn't how it is but now you could do you know a hundred times better self-promotion on the internet than any a and r guy is going to do to you by you know whatever the fuck snake deals they're going to give you now because it's not the same <laughs> And, you know, I think building that SoundCloud following and, like, this internet social media following is, like, the new music industry. You know what I mean? It is. And people, you know, you make, you, you're free to make your own label and, you know, create your own thing, put your name on it, and have people support you directly instead of supporting someone that puts out your music. Because, yeah. you know, there was a lot of times that, you know, like as a kid buying music and shit, like in the 90s and like early 2000s, you would really like an artist and you would, you know, pay $25 back then for a fucking brand new CD. And, you know, 22 of those dollars would go to the label that was already yeah. fucking over the artist. So you weren't really supporting the artist at all. You were just buying their music because that's the only way you can get it. Now and and historically they never even offered good deals anyways, you know, like mm -hmm. you had to earn these fucking good deals. In the beginning, it's like here, we'll pay for this and this and this, and you owe us this money. Yeah, it's all it's So advances. you better hope that you fucking got some hits because if your hits don't pay us back, we're fucking dropping you and you still owe us money. Yeah. That's what a lot of people would be like, Oh, I got this hundred thousand dollar advance. Yeah, that's an advance until you start selling albums and then you gotta pay all that shit back plus interest. Yeah, and in in reality, you're supposed to use that shit for the album. Yeah, you're supposed to use it to get collabs and instrumentals <laughs> and studio time. Yeah, but you, you buy a Rolex instead. Out, yeah. Dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's dope. So I think that uh, I think that up and coming, you know, producers and artists can learn a lot from them. You know what I mean? And I don't mean to fucking toot our own horn, but can learn a lot from our show because we got, you know, people that are in the. Uh, in the behind the scenes industry that have been doing this for years. And I think it's cool that people come on and they love saying, you know, how they did this and the, the steps that got them to where they got, because they know that everybody's story is different. No one can take someone's blueprint, copy it and become successful. You know what I mean? You have to do your own thing. And I think that these guys are definitely doing that. And major uh, keys everywhere. Mm hmm. Shout out to Cali. Yep. So, another one. Go check them out, Contraband on SoundCloud. And we will see you on Thursday. Yaman. Yeah, Yaman. Yeah, Peace, bitches. The Natural Habitat Podcast.